Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Today we're going to reassemble the short block of this GM Holden 5 litre engine. It's the iron line, Alan. The what? It's the iron line. That's what Marv said. Since we pulled the engine down, we've, uh, we've taken it over to Old Cox and dumped it in his big dishwasher and cleaned it right up. Uh, heads as well, manifolds, the whole works. Uh, I got my mate John, who is an engine machinist by trade, to come around and measure up the bores with some, with his, some professional equipment that I don't have. Um, surprisingly, the engine's actually in standard form, standard sizes, and it's actually in good condition. Uh, which is amazing because these engines did have a, an issue with uh, machining um, when they were new. So I didn't really expect it to be any good. But he reports that everything is within spec, so we can reuse everything um, just with obviously replacement rings, bearings, uh, that sort of thing. With that at hand, we um, contacted a few companies. Um, I actually don't know that much about building engines, so I... Um, I got on to some mates and um, asked them who to call. So uh, thanks to Ian and Robbie and Tony and John, the machinist, we got on to the appropriate companies and also Golby. He's a, always a helpful chap. Golby supplied us with just all the sort of uh, gasket sit, uh, set, um, set of Hastings rings and ACL race bearings, just all standard replacement gear there, no dramas. Uh, he also put us on to Camtech, which is an Australian cam manufacturer. They supplied the cam for the VL build. We've also converted from um, the original lifter setup to these um, Morel tie bar lifters. Um, that allows us to get rid of that whole plate setup. So we've changed over to them. There's a whole bunch of valve springs and um, retainers and collets and all sorts of stuff in there. A set of push rods. Um, and also assembly lube. Um, Precision Motorsport, also Australian. Uh, this is an Australian engine, so most of our parts are Australian source, which is good. Uh, they supplied it with a whole bunch of stuff via Ian. Um, timing chain set. A new oil pump, it's just a standard oil pump. Um, it is not recommended to use high volume pumps on Holden V8s because they are driven off, a, um, off the camshaft via a gear and high volume pumps um, tend to kill the camshaft and or gear and then kill the whole motor when it stops turning. So a brand new standard pump is actually a pretty good thing and, and that's all you really need. Um, we've got a set of roller rockers which is definitely a must for um, this arrangement with the cam that we're using. Um, the original ones are pressed steel and they, they will just simply bend with the, um, the seat pressure of the valve springs and the cam lift. So these are precision brand. Um, they're stud mounted, so we do have to modify the head slightly to fit them. Um, there is a, a straight fit version for a smaller version of the cam um, that you can just basically just bolt straight on with no mods to the head as well. But because our cam's got... Um, over 550 thou lift, we need to use these ones. So they're a nice looking bit of kit as well. Um, Tony from Night Engines, a friend of mine, he recommended we use uh, main stud and head studs on this. Um, main walk is, it can be an issue with uh, the engines when you start revving them hard, um, which eventually sort of chatters things to death. So a simple set of studs. We will have to bolt, put them in tension the caps down and recheck the, the main tunnel to make sure it doesn't go out around. If it does, we'll have to get it um, line honed. Um, st head studs, that's a no-brainer. Um, it's a simple and relatively cheap security measure. And also a new balancer, which is the um, same thing. It's a no-brainer. Just put a new one on. You don't know the age of the engine just replace it so you know it doesn't cause problems there's more there's more going on here than just a pulley um, it's uh, an important part um, we've also got a new water pump which is also a no-brainer 
Um, I got onto eBay and got myself a new throttle body for it. This is a, uh, a Mustang replacement throttle body from the 80s off of the 302. Uh, the reason why I'm using this rather than the Holden throttle body is because the ECU that we're using, uh, 950 Haltech Elite, uh, does not have stepper motor control. So this particular throttle body has a, um, a two-wire idle motor, which works brilliantly. Um, I'm not a fan of stepper motors. I don't care what electronics nerds say and how good they are. They are just a pain in the ass but for the end user like me. They just don't work very well. Um, so buzzer motor just works. You just go, I want this, I want this idle speed and it, the Haltech just makes it work. So um, I've got a, some flange plates cut for that from Matt. Uh, and we're going to adapt that on. It's slightly larger than that throttle body as well, so we'll just probably port out the manifold hole a little bit and then just mess around with this linkage system um, for the throttle and the transmission um, throttle valve cable. ECU, trusty Haltech Elite 950. Got a lumen fuse box and I've got a IGN 1A coil to replace the original coil, so that's a smart coil, very high, high output. Um, doesn't need an igniter box, which is what the original setup had. And a couple of sensors and that sort of thing to go with it. So once we uh, put the engine together, I'm actually going to wire it up uh, on the stand just to save my back for later on. So um, let's get into it. We thought we'd do a bit better, more of a pro job on this one um, than we did on the VL, which we basically just reassembled the engine uh, as standard. and you know, carefully. Um, but with this old jigger here, I've brought in one of the experts. It's my mate, John. He is a, an engine machinist by trade. So he's got all the gear to measure the engine properly and make sure that it's all within tolerance. So when we add main studs and head studs and all that sort of stuff and um, get the bearing clearances correct, measuring it the right way with tools rather than with a uh, little squashy plastic Thing, what are those things called? Plastic gauge. Plastic, plastic gauge, gauge yeah. yeah. So, um, you like plastic gauge, John? Not particularly. Ah. <laughs> just makes a mess. <laughs> so we're going to get into it. Um, this is straight out of Alcox dishwasher, so it's just been sitting. It's got a little bit of surface corrosion on it from, from um, sitting around for a bit, but we'll clean that up. Uh, so we're going to start with honing. Uh, we're going to fit the, head stu uh, the main studs, torque them down and check the tunnel clearance and then we'll move on to uh, putting new rings on, pistons, that sort of thing. To do the honing today, we've got the, a flex hone. Um, so when we did the VL RB30 engine, we used a, uh, like a three, like a tripod sort of stone hone. Um, I bought this to do that job, but it was too big. You've got to buy them in sort of within ranges of bore size, whereas the, the three prong hones will spread to a wide variety of bore sizes. So I, I sent it back and then went back and bought it again for this engine. Um, John has bought along his Sunnen hone, which is like a professional tool. Uh, and he's going to explain which one's better and why. Looks fancy, mate. It's pretty fancy. I got it from work <laughs> at a, in an auction. Um, the difference between this one and that one is this one, he'll take ovality and taper out of it. Not a lot of ovality, not a lot of taper, but it will take some out up to probably half there. Um, particularly these ones are 200 stones which is for more of a roughing. You can get them with 300 which is more of a finish. Um, if you're finishing with a sun and hone you won't have to use a flex hone. So that has got two stones on it. Can you pull that out for me a little bit? Two stones and the other two are just aluminium wear strips that stops it chattering. Uh, okay and it keeps it square in the bore then. Cool. And so these are normally mounted into a sort of machine, like that. Versions does. of them are. This one's for a drill. It's a fairly large drill that we used to use them on. Yep. Uh, but generally, the the head's similar to what goes in a machine to a honing machine. Yep. So the honing machine's set to to have the right movement at whatever shaft speed it is. It has the right movement to give you yes. the angle, which is thirty degrees. Thirty on the degrees. Yep. Okay. So sort of takes the guesswork out of it when they do it sort of with an automated machine, which is what a big machine shop would use, um, which we are not. 
So we're going to use this <laughs> or bad not. boy. Um, these things are pretty easy to get a good finish with. I think that's why they're so popular. It, it does the job and does it quick. So um, we'll load that up and see how it goes. And what do you use for lubrication when you're doing this work? Uh, I use kerosene with this, only because I use it at home. Yep, cool. No, um, you use with this. CRC. Anything. WD-40. <laughs> Some sort of lubricant. Anything wet and lubricant. JB-80. Cool. <laughs> Justice Brothers 80. <laughs> we'll get to that. They're probably going a bit faster than that. Drill or movement? That's about right there. So we're using the trusty knife stone again. Um, does a good job of just sort of cleaning the surface without putting like swell marks in it with an abrasive tool. Um, John, you, you've not done this before? No, I haven't done that before. How would you do it? With a milling machine. <laughs> well, I don't have a milling machine, so here we go. So I sent a few messages to my mate, Tony Knight, in uh, Adelaide. He's an engine builder as well. He does a lot of Holden V8 stuff for competition use. And I basically said, oh, you know, what should we do? What's some simple mods to keep the engine alive? Um, the oiling system on Holden engines isn't great. Um, and there's some simple things that you can do just to improve it a little bit. Um, we've got a new oil pump, of course. Uh, he said, in a message back to me with a picture, radius that shit. And what he was talking about is these two holes here. That's oil into the oil pump from the pickup, and that's oil out into the block. So they were just a machined sort of uh, thing like this with a corner, and we put a radius in them, and that just that just improves the oil flow. It, it um, it's it's simple stuff. It helps takes the load off the pump and gets the oil where it's meant to be, which is in the bearings and in the camshaft, etc. Uh, and also the other oiling problem they have is drain back. And a lot of that's to do with a bad design, but we'll, we won't pick on holding too much. But um, there's too much oil gets in the top end when you're revving them, and then it can't get back into the sump. And we've already done it, so it's a bit hard to show you, but these bits here that we've got in and ground, they were really rough casting dags just left there from factory, basically blocking off the oil drain holes um, or reducing them significantly anyway. So simple stuff again, die grinder, Dremel, whatever, just get in there, clean it out, clean it off, give it a little polish. Now the oil can return back to the sump where it's meant to be after it's been pushed through the engine into the top end. Now we're gonna wash it. We just loaded the block into the Daihatsu and took it into Old Cox and give it a good clean out. Um, and it's all, all good. We dried it off and CRC'd it while we were in there so it didn't rust up. Uh, John has checked the ring gaps of all the rings in each bore. And what did you find? 24th hour, top and bottom. And what's it meant to be? Uh, 20 to 21. Okay. So we've got plenty left over if we want to put boost into it later? Yes, sir. Yeah, cool. Uh, now we're sticking the uh, main studs in. We've just got to bolt up those caps, torque them down. John's going to check the, the tunnel for round so to make sure it hasn't distorted it. And if that's all good, then we'll start throwing it together. So what's this tool here you got? Inside micrometer. Yeah. And what have you found? Anything, no, no warpage yet? None yet. Uh, just checking for round at the moment and to make sure there's no taper in the caps themselves. Okay. That'll tell you that it's all on size. It won't tell you if the block's bent, but we'll check that later on with a straight edge. So once we know these are on size. I'm learning, Alan. Me too. It's good, isn't it? It's always good. Never too old to learn. So the two inch 591 is our size there. 
put our trusty book. It's been in some days, hasn't it? It has, it's from 1992. So the tunnel size there is 2 inch 590 and a half to 2 inch 591 and 6 tenths. So we're inside that at 2 inch 591. Good so stuff. So tolerance and we're round, which is good. Awesome. That means this show can continue, Alan. <laughs> it's always a good thing. The show can continue. So what happens now then? We take the caps off, we put the bearings in and we go through the whole thing again. We'll check, okay. the, we'll check for clearance. Um, we'll check for ovality. The bearings will be oval, because they always are. That's how they're made. The, once we've done that, we'll undo one side of the caps. We'll check for crush. And then we're ready to start oiling up, putting the seals in and putting the crank in. Awesome. Ooh, except for the stupid rope main seal. That the we've rope got main to seal. Everybody loves them. Oh, you don't have one? Yeah, we do. We oh, do, that's the they problem. Suck. <laughs> We're now going to put these back in uh, and talk them back down again. It's The bearings are all dry at the moment because we, we uh, want to re-measure them so you don't want grease and assembly lube getting in the way. So talk us through what you're doing here, John. I'm measuring the clearance on the bearings to the crankshaft. Yep. So now I'm measuring the size of the bearings. I'll measure the vertical clearance first, just so I know that we have got clearance. So then you use the... So I'm using the inside micrometer as a gauge, and I'm using the outside micrometer as an actual measurement, because I know this is pretty right, and mm -hmm. this I'm not too sure about. So I've got two inch, 400 and a half mm -hmm. on the actual journal I've got two inches 398 and a half so I've got a thou and a half or two thou clearance on that front journal all of them are the same the thrust bearing is a little larger mm -hmm. it's got about two thou clearance mm -hmm. so now I'll just go back and check the this clearance on the sides, the bearings will always be out around, but you need to check this to make sure they're not the, the actual tunnel isn't compressing the bearing too much. If mm -hmm. it does that, they will seize. So you want that within about half to three quarters of a thou. And just to check that, I've just moved the micrometer up three quarters of a thou just to make sure it doesn't go through. Or if it does, I'll just to find out how much it will go through by. These are all pretty good. How good is this though? A bit better than plastic gauge, eh? The plastic gauge is the same thing though, is that right? Plastic gauge will measure your vertical clearance the same, but it won't tell you how much out of round you've got. Ah, of course. Who'd have thought that little strip of plastic wouldn't be as good as thousands of dollars worth of measuring equipment? Mm, <laughs> yeah, about that. And a trained operator. So we're just checking the crush on the bearings now. The crush actually holds the bearing into the tunnel. It's not the little tabs that only locates it. Um, if you haven't got enough crush, your bearings will spin. Um, obviously covers up the oil holes in, then you'll start spinning bearings and it'll eventually die. It's um, a bad time. Bad time. If you've got too much crush, your bearings will be too far out of round. So you want between three and eight thou, I believe. There may be differences for different blocks. So we just check that we've got, got three thou goes in there, which is good. Five and six won't go in, so it's five there. So we'll check them all. The bearing crush is all good. Uh, now we just got to pull the caps back off again and go through the process of fitting the rope seal into the rear bearing carrier then we can put the crank in.
John's put his foot down, I've been vetoed. He wants to put the cam in instead. Uh, so we're gonna do that. So here's our cam. It's a Cam Tech CT2248. Uh, when I spoke to the guys at Cam Tech, super helpful. And I told them what we were doing and what we may do, depending on what happens with it. Uh, we said we, we don't want to rule out uh, force induction in the future by putting a cam in that's too big for that or uh, is the wrong spec. So they picked a cam that would work for both applications, NA and, and uh, force induction maybe later. So um, you can probably look up the cam card on their site. And if you're a cam nerd, you'll figure out what it's about. You're, I'm, you're not much of a cam nerd, are no, you? No, not really. Um, it's a 233-234 and uh, 114 lobe separation, so get nerdy. They also supplied us with a bunch of lubricant, um, engine assembly lubricant of different types, so for bearings, for uh, bore and for camshaft. So we're going to slather it with that and carefully feed it in. This is sort of like your break-in grease for a camshaft. Um, I don't think that breaking in the camshaft is super important on a roller cam because it because it's not a flat tappet cam, but yeah, on a flat tappet you need to be very careful about the break-in process um, to, otherwise you can grind the cam lobes off straight up. It's a careful job. Just grab it in there. Camshafts in. This little plate is does three things. It is the retainer plate for the camshaft. It is also the thrust for the camshaft off these machine surfaces. And thirdly, that little tab there holds the oil pump drive gear up into position. And this bolt here that's got Ajax written on it, which is really cool also has an oil sprayer in the end of it and that screws into one of the main galleries. Why is Ajax cool? Because it reminds me of like Wiley Coyote. Like it should be like dropping anvils on things or something like that. Uh, isn't that Acme? Oh yeah, it is too. <laughs> you ruined my story. <laughs> Sorry. That's a big hit. That's a big hit. Yesterday's ride was so good. It should have come. We've got those rope seals in. Hopefully they won't leak, which is wishful thinking, really. Uh, put a bit of sealant around here for the cap. Everything's greased up. We're ready to put the crank in now. I'm elated. Hey, hey Fred Durst, <laughs> why aren't you wearing your red hat today? Because I'm representing Goldies. You've got your pants down your waist like you... We're almost bloody jeans, these yeah. things. That's the crank in and I think we're done for the night. Uh, it's about 6.30 on a Saturday night, so everyone's probably got things to do. Had a bit of a late start. Um, the uh, crank's spinning well. That rope seal is tight, and that is a thing with new fresh engines with rope seals in them. It's annoying, and that's why they don't use them anymore. So much drag, but we can't change it, so that's how it is. Um, we'll probably come back tomorrow and finish this short motor assembly off. You good for tomorrow, John? Certainly am. Sweet. You good for tomorrow, well? I should be right. Yeah? What well, if I'm not good? 
Any, any monkey can operate the camera. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> We're talking after lunch, aren't we? <laughs> You'll be right after lunch. Morning. Morning, mate. Morning. Morning. So what's happening with the iron wine today, fellas? More of the same, more clearancing, more checking. More checking? Cleaning. Look how good these pistons are. Pretty shiny. Thanks, Jackson. Jackson, give us a bit of free labour. How good's that? He's a good guy, that Jackson. Just needs guy. to do some dog running for me. Yeah? It's the, it's the ultimate gift. No, no thanks. <laughs> so you're now putting in, I saw you fiddling with the rods before measuring, now you're putting the bearings in. Yep, so we do the same as we did with the main tunnels. We check the, the bore size on the rods, mm -hmm. make sure that's within the spec. We put the bearings in, we check the size on the bearings and then we compare that to the crankshaft and just to get the clearance. And then we do the um, same with the crush. See what happens. <laughs> Shots fired. What's that? <laughs> the, the triple click. Oh, the torque wrench. Apparently you're not allowed to click more than once on the torque wrench, otherwise it's not torque. So that's your shaft size. Mm -hmm. So you want to take the shaft size away from what your inside diameter of your bearing is. So on that we've got two inch 124 on the shaft, which is on well, the journal size, which is bang on bottom size. And that gives us two and a half thou. So it's all within tolerance. bearing stuff's been checked um, it's not uh, 9,000 rpm race engines specific but it's well within all the the tolerances uh, for, given from the factory so John's happy with it so we'll roll with it just um, putting the rings on now but I think we'll do the cam uh, timing and stuff before we put the the pistons in because the more pistons you stick in there the harder it is to turn over so they get pretty tight when they're all fresh it's already pretty tight from that um, new rope seal in the back it's a terrible idea but here's what it is ring expander makes life easier so is your fingers. I usually just use my fingers and, and it hurts afterwards. <laughs> Woody just snaps them and they go in easier then. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Three piece ring, bro. At any age. <laughs> we finally got some rod protection there, Alan. Rod bolt protection. Yeah. One less thing for people to complain about. Sideways entry. This is how the pros do it. Look, hang on, it's backwards. It's not how the pros do it. We've just thrown number one piston in because we need to find a top dead centre mark. So you need a piston in there to, um, to do that. Um, and we need to find a true top dead centre because we're going to degree the cam to get the correct cam timing as within the cam specs. Um, so to do that, we use this nine keyway 
um, chain kit. Um, it's a Cloes, Cloes, something like that. Um, it's supplied by Precision International. Um, and if you have a look here, you'll see that's zero degrees, so straight up and down, and the zero is opposite here, that's your tooth mark. If we want to retard it two degrees, we pull it off and change it to 2R, and then our chain mark is now 2R here. So we do it straight up, see, and then, we, then we'll measure the, um, the camshaft with lift and see what degrees it is using the degree wheel. First up, this has got to go on. That's what a standard one looks like. It's just a single key. And on these Holden V8s, they are a bit different to others. You count chain links between the dot and the dot on here. Uh, it's nine chain links. A lot of people got that wrong over the years and it, uh, the engines sometimes still run, but they are incredibly sluggish. Uh, so factory chain has colours on it, so you can't get it wrong, but the aftermarket chains don't. We're using a dial indicator to find top dead centre, so we, we've got it in the range and set everything up, um, but the, there's dwell, piston dwell at top dead centre, so you, we then wind it down 50 thou, check our measurement here, wind it back up and then down 50 thou the other way, check a measurement here and then, then split the difference. Fifteen. In eleven and a half. Uh, four and a half different, so you've got to move it. Two and a quarter, or two or thereabouts. Top dead centre's done. We've got it on the arrow. Uh, we just got to put uh, either one or a pair of lifters in in this case because they're tie barred. Um, these are Morel hydraulic roller lifters. Supplied by our friends at Camtech. This particular camshaft specification is um, to, to set it up is the amount of lift, inlet lift at top dead centre. So sometimes uh, they measure them differently to that, but um, this is how they've specced it on the sheet. Uh, you get a little cam card when you buy a camshaft that gives you every, every detail that you need. So what we've done is rolled it back uh, from top dead centre to about 60 degrees. Now we'll put the dial gauge on that lifter, on the outer edge of the lifter, so it's not um, affecting the hydraulic um, uh, lash adjuster part of it. And now I just wind it around until we get to a zero and check what the uh, degree, the uh, lift is at uh, top dead centre. Starting to see cam lift at about 42 degrees be before. got 63 and a half in that top dead centre. Well, it should be 71. So we'll go up to 71. And that's two and a half degrees. At 71 thou lift, we are two degrees after top dead centre, so we need to pull the chain off and put it on two degrees advance. At least that's how we think it's going to work, but these things are confusing, so bear with us. Hopefully I can get all this off and change it without taking this off, otherwise we'll have to do the top dead centre thing again as well. you got to talk to me and tell me what's going on. 
we moved it two degrees and now it's correct. So the system works. I like this thing. Cam timing's done so we can throw the rest of the pistons in now. So we're lubing up the bearings with this uh, engine assembly grease. Um, it's Driven brand from Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, this is all supplied by Camtech. They gave us run-in oil, assembly lube, all the works. Good stuff. Seems to be better than that grey schmutz that oh, I've used before. Yeah, that's horrible, that stuff. And they what? Align the rings, ring compressor, smash them in. Line up all the rings and throw her in. So that is the bottom end of the iron line reassembled and you don't like iron line, it's do you? not an iron line. Why not? Keywords, dude. That's the rotating assembly altogether. She's spinning over nicely. It's uh, ready to go. We put the covers on the front, sump on, put some Welsh plugs in it, oil pump and that sort of thing. All the boring stuff. Yeah, all the stuff that it won't work without. Um, Got to say big thanks to Camtech. Uh, Golby's Parts and uh, Precision International for supplying parts for this engine build. Um, support these companies because they support us. The cool thing about this is Aussie engine, Aussie companies, I think that's the best thing about it. It's great. Just stop calling it the iron line. Well, okay then. So now we've got to move on to the cylinder heads. Uh, there's a lot going on over there. The machining, valve springs, retainers got to get done. You've got to machine the yeah, we've got, to, we've got to machine a bit off the um, rocker uh, posts and open up the thread from 3 8 to 7 16 to put the studs in. Um, so there's a bit of work to go there. But that will be next time. That'll be next because time. we've run out of time. Well, we've probably made the biggest episode ever <laughs> putting this engine together. Um, massive thanks to John. Um, awesome. Great to learn off a pro. Never too old to learn. Yeah, it is good. Uh, it's really cool to see how it's done from a guy that's probably done it a million times. Thanks to my mate Jackson for cleaning the pistons. Yep, thanks Legend. Jackson. Uh, I'd like to say a big thanks to you guys for fo coming along and following the show and all our Patreon supporters. You guys are absolute dead set legends and we would not be here if it weren't for you guys. So thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, jump to Facebook, Instagram, follow us. It really helps us out. That's it. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm a bit disappointed that no one's been buying the turbo shirts. No one's buying the turbo shirts? Yeah. What about the Millsy stickers? Don't they like turbos? I love turbos. Why? Maybe because they just like your ugly face on Doesn't, top of the shirt. Uh, the turbo's way cooler than me. See? You're telling me, bro.